peace, not confusion, not fear, not anxiety, not stress. Peace. Because it's peace that surpasses all understanding that's going to lead you into the places. And the purpose for that is so he can establish you, build credibility, and connect you. Are you listening? And connect you. Why? So that there can be a release. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. How is the wealth of the wicked going to get to you? He connects you. Hello. One of the areas is they're not going to know what to do. They're going to look at you as an example, as a witness, as a light, and as a truth. And then they're going to want to support what you do. Are you listening? Oh, hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, is everybody there? <laughs> In verse 1, would you read it with me? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, right? In other words, no condemning, no judgment. But it says something important. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So if you walk according to the flesh, are you going to be considered the remnant? No. Are you a covenant keeper if you're walking according to the flesh? No. Is everybody okay? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the re righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? So how is that righteous requirement fulfilled? As we are walking what? According to the spirit and not according to the flesh. I want you to get this because it's important because you're going to wonder why others are getting it and you're not. How come it's being poured out here and poured out there and I'm not? Well, maybe this is one of the reasons. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be currently minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor deed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you and you are led by him. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he, will, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now I want you to understand something. Now I want you to grab this connection. Why are you going to need a mortal body? I mean, why are you going to need an immortal or a immortality, a glorified body? Because if you're a covenant-keeping child, you're associated with a covenant land. Are you listening? And that covenant land is Jerusalem of heaven. So you're going to need a glorified body. Are you listening? Is everybody Okay. Go to Revelation 21. Glorified bodies to accommodate our relationship with New Jerusalem. All others will be condemned. Revelation 21. Every covenant-keeping child is associated with a covenant land called New Jerusalem. In verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write off, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So if you are a covenant-keeping child, you are associated with a covenant piece of property. <laughs> Amen? Covenant land called New Jerusalem. Now I want you to understand again, what are we, what's all the fight over right now? It's over what? The land. Amen? Go to Matthew 5. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. And verse 3. They call these the Beatitudes. I call them attitudes. <laughs> these are blessed attitudes. <laughs> blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Ooh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. Where? In heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <laughs> the blessed, the covenant children. So there's something that's going to happen. In other words, we're going to see that there's going to be an increase of persecution. Are you listening? Things are going to seem rougher. But the Bible tells us that they can't touch us. Can't touch me. Do, 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 do. These are the attitudes, amen? These are associated with warnings and preparations for sorrows that are going to come into the world and that are in the world right now. These are areas that we must maintain no matter what. Go to Matthew 24. Hallelujah. Now I said all this to get to this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why is this going to happen? Why are these, in other words, why are all of these things going to increase? And we've talked about this scripture, but I'm going to go over it again because I want to show you why these are things have to happen. In verse 3 in Matthew 24, is everybody there? Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to him, take heed that you're not what? That no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying I am the Christ, and will deceive many, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <laughs> 